I'm Matt McBrayer with the Cerrito Church of Christ, and this is a message from God's Word. Dry bones, dry bones, gonna walk around. Dry bones, dry bones, gonna walk around. Dry bones, dry bones, gonna walk around. So hear the word of the Lord. The hand of Jehovah was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of Jehovah, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. So Ezekiel was in that valley of dry bones, and God told Ezekiel to prophesy or to preach to them. And so that's what he did. God told Ezekiel what he was going to say, and he started off with, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, that verse was from Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. And I'm not in a valley of dry bones, but I am standing in front of the pumpkin house in Canova, West Virginia. And soon there's going to be 3,000 hand-carved pumpkins on display right behind me. Now, what if while I was standing out here in front of this place that we look at all these pumpkins, and let's say all 3,000 pumpkins are out here, and I started to preach to those pumpkins. And as I started preaching, they started shaking and rolling around all over the place. And then something amazing happened. They started to grow arms and legs and became bodies. Now, that's basically what happened to Ezekiel, except there weren't any pumpkins. What happened is that he began to preach, they began to rattle around, and then the bones started coming together. And then something amazing happened. They started growing muscle on them and then skin. But then all there were were just lifeless bodies all around. And then Jehovah God actually spoke to Ezekiel again and said that he needed to prophesy or preach again to those bodies laying there and preach that the winds would come in and to fill those bodies with breath. And so that's exactly what he did. And Wind came from everywhere. The bodies got breath back in them, and they, they started to live. And now a vast army was standing in front of Ezekiel, and God had made his point, and he told Ezekiel to go and tell the people. You see, that's what happened in the Old Testament times. God would tell the prophets, and the prophets would go and tell the people. And so now, it's Ezekiel's turn. God now speaks to us by this book. The Bible has been proven to be true and authentic. And there are preachers everywhere, like me, that sole purpose in life is to preach to the dry bones all around us, if you will. Back then, God wanted his people to know that if they would be faithful to him and obey his commands, that he would provide for them and bring them home. You know what? God still wants us to obey his commands. He still wants us to be faithful. But the question is, what are those commands? The Bible tells us about Jesus. He was God in the flesh, and he was perfect. But even though he's perfect, some still hated him, even people from his own country. They hated him enough that they wanted to kill him. He taught things that were so different from what they had learned in their traditions. These people that hated Jesus ended up killing him. Well, Jesus is God. He could have stopped it himself but he ended up offering himself as a sacrifice. Before the death of Jesus, God had commanded his people to offer sacrifices to him. They were supposed to be the best of his livestock. Doing these sacrifices, that's how they would show themselves to be penitent and to make things right with God. Jesus was perfect and his sacrifice was so perfect that it took the place of all the animal sacrifices done in the Old Testament. And because of this, we now have a perfect sacrifice because He willingly laid down his life for us to save us from our sin. So is that it? Everything's taken care of? Everything's out of the way? Well, yes and no. Jesus gave some instructions to his disciples at the end of his life on this earth. After his death, he resurrected from the grave. And then he met with his disciples for days after in order to tell them what they were going to do. In Acts chapter 2, we find something very important. The disciples were told what to do on that day, and they were to teach it to others. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was able to preach a sermon to many people. And during that sermon, he ended up telling those people that they had crucified the Son of God, that they had killed Jesus. 
And so they, being shocked at the news that they were given and not knowing what to do, they said, well, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he told them to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And on that day of Pentecost, those people, when they had heard that word, they were cut to the heart and they believed it. And that's why they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? They believed that they had just crucified the son of God. And then Peter told them that they needed to repent. And they they showed that really in their, their sincerity that they were willing to do that. But they're told to repent and then be baptized so that they could have their forgiveness of sins. And then it is up to them to live faithfully throughout the rest of their life. The same is still true today. We need to hear God's word. Romans ten seventeen says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We need to repent of our sins, Luke 13, 3. I tell you nay, but unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We need to confess Christ before men every day of our lives, Matthew 10, 32, and 33, that if we confess him before men, he will confess us before the Father, and if we deny him, he will deny us before the Father. We need to be baptized in the Christ, 1 Peter 3, 21, the like figure wherein too, even baptism doth also now save us, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. And we need to live faithfully. Revelation 2 and verse 10. Be faithful unto death, and thou shalt receive a crown of life. After watching this, you may have some questions. And we'd love to sit down and have a one-on-one study with you if you'd like. If you want to study more about the Bible with us, please contact us at 304-453-2087.